Okay guys, today we're going to be studying covalent compounds, how to name them and how to write their formulas. Um, there's a quiz associated with this lesson. Um, it's going to be on naming ions and naming ionic compounds, which would be lesson 6.04. So make sure you, you study that in preparation for your quiz. And we also have a homework associated with this lesson. So um, you'll need to copy down a header for these questions, which we'll do in class next time I see you, um, and also include this aim, which is how do you name binary covalent compounds. All right, so we know that a binary compound is covalent if you've got two different nonmetal atoms bonded together. And naming them really couldn't be easier. Um, we're going to use the geometric prefix system, some of which you probably know, like one would mean mono, two is di, three is tri. Um, and then after you get to five, it pretty much follows exactly what you would expect from math class. So four is tetra, but then five is penta, and then from there it's hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. So I'm sure you've seen those prefixes before. But you're just going to use these for a covalent compound, so only if it's nonmetal, nonmetal. And um, it's going to tell you how many atoms of that element there are in the molecule. Um, so that's the basics of it. Now, there are a couple of exceptions and rules. Um, for instance, mono does mean one, but we never use this prefix for the positive portion of the atom, the molecule. So you would never, let's, since the positive portion is always written first, I would say just know that the molecule's name is never going to start with mono. Um, you would just say the element and, and not say that there's one. However, if the negative portion of the molecule has only one of the atoms, then you're allowed to use mono for the second ion, or for the second atom, but you can't use it for the first. All right, so here's the rule. Always use the prefix mono for the negative portion, but not for the positive. And a note, if the element name starts in a vowel, then any final A's or O's would not be used. For example, like if you had um, one oxygen atom in the second portion of the molecule, so it's the negative one, then um, you would say oxide, or in this case, monooxide. But that's awkward, so the final A or O in the prefix, like mono, the, this O right here, is going to be dropped out when we um, put the two names together. So instead of monooxide, it'll be monoxide. Um, another example would be like, let's say that we had tetraoxide, then um, we would drop the final A, and instead of being tetraoxide, it would be tetroxide. All right, so let's try this one. I a pack name for CO. Um, there are there are many different mistakes you might make from monocarbon, monooxide, to monocarbon, monoxide, but the correct name is going to be just carbon because we would not use the prefix mono for the first portion of the molecule, but we would say monoxide because we do use the prefix mono for the second portion of the molecule. All right, so let's try naming these guys as well. So O2F2 is going to be dioxygen. So we're not changing the element's name because that's the positive portion. And then we would say difluoride because you would, instead of saying fluorine, you would say fluoride since this is the negative portion of the molecule. For this one, we can say tetrasulfur, tetranitride. So I hope you're picking up on that, that I don't change the name of the element for the positive guy, but I do change the name of the negative element and end it in "-ide". So the third one, I would go with dinitrogen, dichloride, for the same reasons um, above. For the next one, I would say dihydrogen. Mono sulfide. So I am allowed to use the prefix mono if it's the um, the second element. 
And for the last one, SO3, you would not use the prefix mono for sulfur because it's the first element. So we would just say sulfur, but there are three oxygens. So I'm going to say trioxide. Okay, so let's say that you're given the, um, the, the name and you're asked for the formula. So um, what you can do is just determine the charges of the ions and then cross their charges to find their subscripts. And the ion that comes first is going to be the one that's positive. Um, now we always let the metal go first because it's going to be the positive one in almost every case. But since these are all molecules in this lesson, there are no metals. So in order to figure out which one goes first, we'll have to choose the one that has the lowest electronegativity, which is what the metal would be doing in a typical molecule or a typical compound. So in these guys, we will have to pay attention to their electronegativities. All right, so dinitrogen monoxide. So clearly we're talking about this, N2O. For boron tribromide, it's going to be just B, but Br3. For carbon dioxide, CO2. For nitrogen dioxide, NO2. And for dichlorine monoxide, it's going to be Cl2O. But so here's one of the more tricky parts. Let's say that we just say that the molecule contains hydrogen and sulfur. The formula of the molecule, um, we're going to need their charges from those typical atoms, and we'll need to know which one's positive and which one's negative. So if you look up the electronegativities, you will find that hydrogen is lowest, so it's going to be written first, and it also means that it's positive. So this is the positive ion for hydrogen, H plus 1. Sulfur is negative 2 in really every case, and um, we're going to need to uh, cross the charges to figure out how many uh, of each of these atoms there are. So the 2 from the sulfur can come down and be a prefix for hydrogen, and the 1 can be a prefix for the sulfur. So we're going to need two hydrogens to balance the charge of one sulfur. And um, S, since we, we need one of them, you don't actually write the one, so just write H2S. And the name of this molecule is going to be dihydrogen monosulfide. And so we've reached the pair up. It's a simple table. Just copy down the parts that um, are present, and then in class we'll do the parts that are missing. And the summary, um, copy these down as well. Um, since some of these are quite long, feel free to, um, uh, I guess, shorten these. Um, just keep the gist of the question um, present. And thanks for watching.